one of my subscribers, Nika Kine, not subscribers, but friends, just writes, Hello, just a question, how do you calculate your descent profile? Well, it's time for the video. Hello, my friends, and welcome. My name is Dennis, and today we are going to find out how to calculate the descent profile. And today we're just going to start from the theory, but later on, next videos, we're going to do the real descent, we're going to play it on the simulator, which I have on my laptop, the NGXU Boeing 737 simulator. So, my friends, let's start. I'm not good at drawing, so I'll just draw the baller here, and let's admit this. It is the airplane. The ball has several characteristics. Well, first it has the speed as the airplane, so we have velocity. It has some mass and mg its weight, so mass is the characteristic of the object. And it has also the height, the flight level, let's say. The flight level, let's say 360, for example. So we are flying and we have potential energy because we have flight level and the potential energy. Well, I don't want to draw the formulas, but the potential energy, let's say, is just the function of the flight level, the function of the altitude, let's say H. So it has some level. So this is the ground here. And the velocity here, the airspeed, is a function of kinetic energy. And the sum of those two energies, well, energy potential plus energy kinetic is equals to, equals to total energy. Total. And we need to convert the potential energy, the energy of the altitude and height, we need to convert it to kinetic energy. How can we do it? Well, we can just land like this. Boom! So, my friends, we may just release this ball, this airplane over here, and it can just convert the potential energy into kinetic energy in a matter of seconds. But we cannot do it with a real airplane like this. We can do it with a ball because it can convert it and it can damage the floor, it can damage itself. So, the kinetic energy itself will be converted into uh, the heat energy and it can deform the ground, it can deform the this ball itself, but anyway, we cannot do it with the airplane because during the descent, the airplane will gain very high speed, which is much higher than the structural limit, so it can just break apart. And at that high flight level, the potential energy is so huge that it can be equivalent of the large bomb explosion. So we need to do it more smoothly in this way. We need to descend and land our airplane, so we need gradually descend, gradually convert the potential energy into the kinetic energy. To lose this altitude or high, we need to convert it to the speed. So, gradually we reduce the altitude and in this moment the speed starts to increase. The more air speed you have, the more vertical speed you have. Vertical speed as well. So to increase your vertical speed to descend faster, you need also to increase your air speed. But you cannot increase your air speed forever, since there is a maximum operating speed, and there is a red bar on the speed indicator on the upper part of the air speed indicator that you cannot reach. You can reach it, but it's the violation of the airplane limitations. And for ATR, the maximum speed was used to be. Uh, 250 knots. For Boeing, of course, it's much higher since it's the jet airplane. I think we should start with the airplane right now. So here we have the airplane, it's on a cruising flight level, and so where we need to start our descent. So here is the runway, and this point is final push, fix, valve, where you enter the glide slope. So here's the Pilot's approach for this runway. Let's say we fly at cruising flight level of 360, flight level 360, and this final approach, final approach fix at 3000 feet, and let's admit this zero elevation airfield. And let's also admit that we don't have any pressure differential. So here we fly Q and E, 1013 hectopascals, the same pressure we have here, 2992 inches of mercury, the same we have over here. So everything is standard, 
pretty much no transition level over here. And what we need to do is we need to convert this into feet. So 36,000 feet minus 3,000. Then we have our entry and it equals uh, 33,000 feet. That's what we need. And now we need to get rid of those zeros over here. And we have 33. We need to multiply by 3 and that equals 99 nautical miles. So we need to start our descent in ideal conditions with no wind. 99 nautical miles from this point. So here 99 nautical miles so we just set this point in your flight management computer you press it direct and you check that you have 99 nautical miles but also you may check it on a progress page of your FMS so basically yes 1 by 3 multiply your flight level by 3 get rid of this 0 and you'll have your distance to your final approach fix or to your uh, touchdown so here's the touchdown at three more, uh, correction, nine more nautical miles, and you will have 108 nautical miles in total to your touchdown. What airspeed should you maintain during descent? Well, the best variant is to maintain your economy speed based on your cost index, on your weight, on your wind, etc. So, what do you have in your flight management computer? But you cannot maintain it forever. Somewhere you need to decelerate. So, here we have some kind of deceleration. Deceleration. Deceleration point at which you need to start descend, uh, start decelerate the speed, not descend, but decelerate the speed to have at least, well, Boeing 77 we have here flaps 5. You need to have flaps 5 and speed around 180 knots just to get into this point. If you are not with flaps 5, if you are maintaining for example speed 230 and you are at the final approach fix, you your speed can be accelerate can accelerate even higher here during this descent. And the airspeed is in knots of course. The knot is nautical mile per hour. During the descent you usually maintain speed, the airspeed to 60 up to 280, sometimes higher if you need. And from this speed you need to decelerate to 180, so we need to lose 100 knots. It's quite a lot. And how to reduce your airspeed, how to get rid of those 100 knots, around 100 knots that you don't need on a final approach fix. Well, basically you need to reduce your vertical speed. So here's the weight it always pointing down and here is the airplane and the weight helps you to gain the speed it helps you to uh, convert potential energy into the kinetic energy and you need to reduce the pitch here and this is no longer a system for your descent the weight itself and you need to reduce your vertical speed and little by little with the help of the drag they are dynamic drag. Also, you can extend the spoilers. The speed will reduce and you can extend the flaps. We always have a flaps limit speed, the maximum speed at which you can extend the flaps. For Boeing 77, for flaps one position, it's 250 knots for five, the same. So if you extend flaps five and you again start to descend, it will be very hard for the airplane to get the same airspeed the same energy and that's basically how we reduce the airspeed before final approach fix and if you don't have enough profile in your airplane's flight management computer always add at least five nautical miles to this five nautical miles to descent top of descent point just for speed reduction because if you reduce your vertical speed of course you will fly much further than with the stable vertical, the stable high vertical speed. Here you just decelerate and continue fly again. And set your vertical speed accordingly. So it may vary with your descent, but you need to maintain this one to three altitude distance ratio. How else can you calculate your required vertical speed? Well, you can just check it in your flight management computer so you can put the point, this point in the sand page. You can 
put the constraint of 3000 feet and you will have your required vertical speed to reach at this point but if you don't have this feature you can also calculate your vertical speed at lower levels you cannot do it higher levels because there is the truss airspeed true airspeed is quite higher compared to true airspeed at the lower levels so the difference is quite huge so it's not very stable for calculations however if you're at lower levels you can calculate it for example if you are here at i think 900,000 feet let's say and you maintain the ground speed of 270 knots you just wonder what vertical speed should you maintain to reach your final approach fix at 3000 feet how to know it how to understand it well you just need to convert this uh, ground speed it's by the way the ground speed you can convert it into miles so it's around 4.5 miles multiple miles per per minute so it's per hour and 4.5 nautical miles per minute and if you are 18 miles out of so if you are 9000 feet 18 miles away you can divide this 18 by 4.5 equals 4 so cover this distance in 4 minutes in 4 minutes you need to lose how much 6000 feet so 6,000 feet divided by 4 equals 1,500 uh, feet per minute, feet per minute. So that's the vertical speed you need to maintain to reach the final approach fix. But you are maintaining quite high speed, so I would recommend to use speed brakes and this low altitude. So speed brakes and also increase, initially increase your vertical speed. So let it be 2,000 feet per minute with speed brakes use all aerodynamic drag possible and just before reaching 3000 feet let's say at 4000 feet reduce your vertical speed to 600 feet per minute with speed brakes the speed will go down very fast and then start flaps extension so you can extend flaps at 250 knots on Boeing 707 and then you may enter final approach fix it's uh, not necessary to have 180 knots here you may have higher it depends on your distance to the runway but usually it's 180 knots if you have around 200 it's also okay you can extend gear much earlier it will also create extra drag for you so those features can help you for your stable approach and that was ideal situation for us but what if we have the wind now well the headwind is not really a problem but if you have the tailwind you need to add some distance here for your calculation i usually add 10 percent of the wind so if you have the tailwind here of 50 knots tailwind component at five miles here and if your weight is quite high if your mass is high add more for boeing 737 and for airbus the average weight is around 60 tons so for everything more than that you need to add some mileage here well i usually add if i have around 65 tons i add again plus five so that's the rules of thumb as, as you may call it. The heavier the aircraft is, the slower it decelerates. What happens if you just overfly your top of descent point and you continue to fly for next, I would say maybe 20 miles and you're closer than this and you need to lose your altitude very fast. Remember I said you need to convert your potential energy into kinetic energy. Here you need to convert your altitude for your speed and do it fast. Well, you need to go away from your maximum operating uh, MMO, Mach operating maximum, maximum operating Mach speed. So first you start with this descent and then, then the air is 
still less dense compared to lower altitudes. So you need to increase your vertical speed as much as possible. And by doing that, you also increase in your ear speed. So you go like this with the ear speed around 320 knots. It can be like this with speed brakes and then you go like this. So the basic principle is like this. I show you these numbers just it may be less, maybe around 300 knots or 290, but it's higher than your usual ear speed during the sand. Also you need to increase your vertical speed as I said before, where in the ear where the ear is less dense here it won't be possible to reach the same vertical speed for that speed for that ear speed so here you can reach let's say 3500 uh, feet per minute for the same speed here you'll do like 2000 feet per minute with the same ear speed and of course my friends the air traffic controller may just say to you uh, reduce your ear speed to 50 knots take heading 180 maintain your current altitude and you don't need this calculation anymore <laughs> how do i descend in real life well i program my flight management computer according to arrival chart so i need to follow all the constraints all the speed restrictions altitude restrictions for each point but really i expect to be vectored directly to final approach fix so for the sand page i keep usually final approach fix or intermediate fix and I have the required vertical speed for that. So if I'll be vector for that point, I know what to expect. I know what vertical speed should I set to get there. And if you don't have specific constraints for your points in your arrival chart, you just can set the final approach fix altitude and you will have your own constraints built up according to your three degrees profile usually. And you just press enough you press me now that's what i usually do and follow this same logic of flight management computer and it will just follow your airplane according to profile then you'll just extend the flaps and prepare for landing or go around as for atr 72 aircraft well we don't have vnav there but you can maintain vertical speed according to vnav profile which you will have on your outboard DU on your navigation display you have your special bike it's similar to glide slope back so you can just follow it with your vertical speed so it's quite similar hey you who are you I know who you are you are awesome guy so you need to follow awesome guy checklist first like this video then subscribe to my channel then ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching and have a great time. I just hope my friends that you understood at least something from this video because I still think that I'm not very good in English. So if you have some extra comments or questions or critics, because I'm not ideal, you know, I always, we always do mistakes as humans. So I'm not an exception. So if you have something to add, please write your comments. And I read all of your comments and I try to answer to all of you. And probably next videos will be about the practice. So we're gonna descend in the simulator on Boeing 737 NG and I will show you how to do it. Thank you very much, my friends.